So this is a place that tourists would probably never come to. Dude, I mean, all you have to do is come here and people will talk to you and invite you into their home. <laughs> Actually, sit down, drink, eat. drink with me. <laughs> and now it's like, you know, a romantic picnic idea, I think, for everybody oh, yeah. is to come here. Can you talk about your family or? No, I don't talk about them. No, no I'm just kidding. Do you want to talk about racism? <laughs> about racism. Do you have any advice not to get into scams or? Are we in Beverly Hills right now? Where? Wow, you've got like some hot topics on here. I know. <laughs> so we're gonna we're about to start our tour. It's 8 a.m. in the morning. I I don't think we've filmed that early yet. Hi guys, on this channel I share what it's like to live in Kazakhstan and today I have another interview with my friend Dennis. Let's ask him all the questions that I have. You seem to love those interviews. So let's begin. So Dennis, how did you end up in Kazakhstan? It's a really long story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, seriously. Maybe. Because I came here for the first time when I was a teenager. Uh, when I was 17 years old, I was living, I grew up in California. I was in high school. I wanted to go somewhere for the summer. And I found an exchange program that sent American high school kids to Kazakhstan. And so I came here for a summer and I lived with the Kazakh family. And I started to learn Kazakh and Russian. And that's kind of when this whole love affair started. Mm -hmm. So. Then I went to school and studied Russian. I went to grad school and studied Kazakh. And then I was like, all right, now I'm in too deep. What am I going to do with this? <laughs> I have to move to Kazakhstan. So eight years ago, I moved here, mm -hmm. studied Kazakh, taught English for a little bit. And now I've been doing my own thing. Um, I have uh, a walking tour business called Walking Almaty, um, a blog uh, about Almaty called Walking Almaty. And so actually today, I want to take you to some of my favorite places in the city, specifically this neighborhood where we are right now, called Kampot. Yeah, we're privileged to take a tour today. Well, thank you guys for waking up bright and early to come meet me. Oh, thank you. We're connected. <laughs> <laughs> this is really funny, actually. <laughs> he, just, like, he just like walks around the room twice. Where are we? So are you probably wondering where we're going right now? <laughs> Actually, you can't see from here. Oh, here it is. Yeah. So Kuktube is known for that kind of famous TV tower, mm -hmm. right? And so most tourists, when they come to Almaty, they go up to that little park up there, and there's just so many people, and it's a bit of a zoo. There's literally like a weird zoo up there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's not really my favorite place, but the views are so cool, right? And so I started to think, how can I come to this hill, which is called Kuktube, Green Hill in Kazakh, still get the views, but have it all to myself? So I was looking at the maps and I saw that there were these secret little trails up here. And you saw we, we started down there yeah. at the highway, it's like five minute walk, and then you get this crazy panoramic view of the whole city. That's amazing. For someone lazy like me, this is perfect. <laughs> you just like walk up five minutes. And now it's like, you know, romantic picnic idea, I think for everybody oh, yeah. is to come here. Because you will pretty much always have this place to yourself. Yeah, so actually from here you can keep hiking up this trail oh, okay. and it kind of goes around and there's like this whole orchard of apple trees up there oh. and then you can actually walk up to the, the park itself so okay. don't have to pay for a cable car mm -hmm. don't have to pay for a bus you can just hike up there it's funny how like i would never think to, to take hiking trails to Kotsume as a local for some reason nobody does that probably right that's the thing about hiking here is that Almatians are kind of so hardcore about hiking and mountaineering yeah. that they only kind of seem to know like the hardest, yeah. craziest yeah. <laughs> trails, right? So so one time when we met, we took the trail to Kuk Trail Lao, yeah. which people here consider to be like this easy trail. I know. And it I kicks your like, butt. I know. <laughs> so you, did you study Kazakh culture as a subject in school? Or? Yeah, so I, I took this, um, I did this grad program at, at Stanford University. Mm -hmm. 
called Russian, East European, and Eurasian Studies. So the idea is that it kind of covers everything in the former Soviet Union. But I was really lucky to have this teacher, Professor Alma Kulinbayeva, who is a Kazakh uh, ethnographer. Yeah, so I've she seen like, her. He's, she knows everything about Kazakh culture, and so I basically studied under her for a year. She taught me Kazakh, mm -hmm. the Kazakh language. Mm -hmm. She taught me about Kazakh culture, Kazakh history, and then ever since then, though, I've just been fascinated. So I read a lot of books. I do a lot of research on my own, mm -hmm. especially about Almaty, about the history of Almaty. And you said you were teaching. Uh, on such Central Asian culture, What I'm maybe? teaching? Yeah. So actually now, the last two years, I've been teaching at UCLA. Mm. Um, and we have a course that's kind of basic Kazakh, so it's a language course. And then a course called Introduction to Kazakhstan, which is mm. about the history and culture. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. How did you come up with an idea to, be, to, to have that business, to do the walking tours? So it started out as just like my own personal project to walk around the city. Because it's like my first summer here, you know, when you first move, move to a new place, you're trying to get to know it, you're walking around, you're trying to get your orientation, learn the streets. Mm -hmm. So I was doing that, but I was really obsessive about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like trying to go to every part of town, learn about every building, learn about every street. And so I collected all this information and photos and stuff, and I made a blog, walking around. And the blog, people really liked, and people started to say, well, you'd actually, you seem to know a lot about town, and like, you would be a good person to share with people. Mm -hmm. And I realized that actually, in a lot of cities in the world, you can go and find walking tours, right? Or even free walking tours. And in Almaty, nobody was doing it. Yeah. But it's a super walkable town. Um, that's a charming place to, to walk around, so why not? So mm -hmm. I just made a page on TripAdvisor mm -hmm. five or six years ago, and that's how it started. Yeah, and Dennis is the most popular guide, and in general, his tours are the most unique experiences and the most hidden gems that you will find in Almaty. Even I, as a local, local, <laughs> found out so many new places uh, through Dennis. So actually, the next place we're going to go is like, see this whole neighborhood mm -hmm. down here? So it's like kind of between the highway and the, the center of town. It's a place called Kampot. Have you heard of Kampot before? Only from you, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no so idea. It's a, it's a really cool neighborhood. It's super green. Um, I'll tell you later about like why it's called Kampot. But it's, you can see it's, an, it's another case where it's like so close to the city. It's super easy to get to. But when you get there, you're like, this is a different universe than, than what I'm used to. Oh, wow. So we'll check that out. Okay, let's go see. Well, I, I tried to um, to make them different because like when tourists come, they can find a lot of stuff on their own, right? Mm -hmm. They could probably find mm -hmm. the Green Bazaar on their own. Yeah, yeah. They can probably go to Cote d'Ivoire yeah. on their own. Mm -hmm. But what it, what are things that would be harder to just find on your own? Mm -hmm. And so like neighborhoods like Kampo, right? Even local people don't actually know about Kampo, so it's fun to take people here. What are some things that you like about Kazakhstan or the culture? How did you decide to move here? <laughs> like, what? How did that happen? Um, Too many questions. Well, I decided to move here because I had spent so much time learning the languages and learning uh, the culture that I felt like it was kind of a waste just to sit at my house in California mm, with that. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to apply my knowledge, I wanted to learn more, I wanted to be here so that I could explore and talk to people and do research. Mm -hmm. So that's why I moved here. And it's hard for me to explain like what I, what it is about Kazakhstan. Like this. I think obviously, it, to be honest, it comes from the fact that it is so obscure and unknown. Mm -hmm. It just makes it that much more fun to learn about because mm -hmm. you're starting at, at zero pretty mm -hmm. much, right? If you learn about France or Germany, like you have a basic idea of what's there. With Kazakhstan, it's all brand new. Mm -hmm. so, so there's something exciting about that. Mm -hmm. And then I think the other thing is just that it's so diverse here. Mm -hmm. Diverse in terms of languages, in terms of people, in mm -hmm. terms of cuisines, in terms of landscapes, that there's always something new to discover. Mm -hmm. I've been here for eight years and I'm still like learning new things, trying new things. Did you have any difficulties when you were moving, when you were coming here in general? 
I would have to think back to like the, the very first times I was yeah. here. And what I always remember is that there's certain kind of cultural codes that you don't know when you first move here, right? Of how people behave, how to be polite. And so I remember just like constantly offending people. Mm. You know, like like little things like like shaking people's hands like when they walk in the door, uh. right? I remember like the first winter here, like I would try to shake someone's hand with my glove on and they would be like, no, take your glove off. <laughs> uh, when you shake an older person's hands, you have to shake it with two hands. And I'm like, just for shaking people's hands, there's like a million different rules you have to learn. And people really get upset if you don't do it. But like coming from California, how am I supposed to know about this stuff? So that's like, that's obviously like, those are obstacles at first. The good thing is though that that's kind of counteracted by the fact that people are so uh, generous and hospitable and patient all the time. Especially once they learn that I'm studying Russian or Kazakh, mm -hmm. people kind of open up their hearts a little mm -hmm. bit, right? They love that yeah. when somebody left, learns something about their culture. So when you first came here, were you on tourist visa, visa? What kind of visa was that? When I first came here, I was on a student visa. Student visa. I guess that's what it was because I was studying at Kimap. I was studying Kazakh oh, okay. at Kimap. Do you know anything about permanent residency here? Like getting visas in general? Yeah, well, I mean, so now I have a business visa because yeah. I registered Walking Almaty mm. as a tour company and that allowed me to get a business visa and that gives me a certain amount of stability. Um, was it difficult? No, well, I hired a lawyer and uh -huh. it wasn't all that difficult. And it was important to me because now I have a kid and he's also an American citizen and so we, we really need to have everything in order because we need to have that security and that stability. Um, whereas if people are coming here for like shorter term stays, most of the time they can do a visa free thing. Yeah. Right? So they can be here for a month without a visa, mm -hmm. as Americans at least, which is mm -hmm. awesome. For I think 40 countries can come here without a visa in normal times. But a lot of people want to come live here and yeah. like work remotely. Yeah. And I've heard that you can get a the card, the permanent resident card, mm -hmm. for like two or three thousand mm dollars. -hmm. Uh, so I don't. So the biggest obstacle isn't really about the money; it's about the paperwork. Yeah. So you have to get like a background check. You have to do your fingerprints. Write some kind of autobiography of like what the hell is that? <laughs> I started to do it one time, so so yeah. I never actually finished it. But I literally had to write down the birthday and address of like everybody I know, like everybody in my family. They needed to have the address of like my brother-in-law. Oh my god! And he was like, "Oh, and of his place of work." And he's like, what "Kind of weird spy shit is this that they need to have this information?" Yeah. That's so weird, yeah. And that's just to get the residency permit. That's not like yeah. to become a citizen. What about in general, like the laws here? Are they in favor for foreigners come here and open businesses or? Yeah, no, I, I think uh, I think they make what it pretty easy, like. You know, starting a small business for, in, in Kazakhstan is super easy, mm. uh, especially to, compared to the states and to the rest, where there's a lot of regulations mm -hmm. and, and forms you have to fill out. And Here, you can—I like, mean, you can like go on eGov and, and, and yeah. do stuff in like ten minutes. Set it up, yeah. So, so that's easy. Um, I think the important thing to understand about business here is just that there's a crazy amount of opportunities. Mm -hmm. you know, I came here, I don't like... have any background in tourism at all, <laughs> and I st could start this successful tourism business just because nobody was doing it. Mm -hmm. Nobody was doing walking tours. It's empty, tours. it's empty. And for every idea like walking tours, there's a million more where there's cool things that people could do, and just nobody's done it. So now that you have the business visa, you can just come and leave and enter yep. anytime. Yeah, it's more time entry. The dating apps that I'm using, for example, they all focus locally. So like by design, right? They have by design, yeah, yeah. But like now it's like pandemic. So what do you think is special about this place? So this is a place that tourists would probably never come to because this is a tuberculosis hospital, <laughs> actually. Okay. So I think even like most local people would probably stay yeah. away from this place because a lot of contagious people in there. But there's a really cool Soviet mosaic here. Uh, and sometimes you can go onto the property and wander around, but today we decided to kind of play it safe. Yeah. But you can actually, if you peek over the fence, you can see a big mosaic right there from the late 1960s. Um, and the cool thing is, if you, if you look at the mosaic, you can see what's happening 
is there's a woman who's holding uh, a bowl and she's giving it to this man and there's this doctor behind him. And so what's happening there actually is she's giving kumas, no. uh, fermented horse milk to the patient mm. because traditionally that's what horse milk was used for in Kazakhstan was to treat treat lung diseases and tuberculosis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, these mosaics, I mean, they took months and months to make. They were made by like true artistic geniuses. This was made by this guy named Modak Bek Kimbaev and, mm. and Tsipchinsky, Nikolai Tsipchinsky, who were kind of the masters of mosaics in Kazakhstan. And there's not that many of them left. Mm. Uh, but people don't really know about this place, so I try to bring some attention to it because the problem is the next day somebody can come and can tear this mosaic down, and then, yeah. then it's gone. What's something special about this area in general, the neighborhood? It's, um, you know, the cool thing is that we're right next to kind of downtown mm. Almaty, which they call the Golden Quarter. Um, but it's really a different world because here it's mostly people living in small houses. So it's mm -hmm. like cute little cottages. Um, which means it's super quiet, super green, there's fruit trees everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, but then you walk five minutes and you're in the center of, you know, Kazakhstan's biggest city. Mm -hmm. So I like that you can kind of come here, just walk around, mm -hmm. have peace and quiet and enjoy the vibe. So what's your typical routine? Like your typical day? I know you're a dad now, yeah, it's probably crazy. Yeah. It's kind of a weird time because now mm -hmm. the tourism industry is pretty much dead yeah. this year. This whole um, year, yeah. And kind of tragically, they just announced that it's probably going to be dead for the rest of the year because they're not going to let in any visa-free tourists until the end of the year. Yeah. So yeah, like my 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 normal routine, especially this is the tour season. It's May. It's kind of officially started. It means that I would have been doing you know one, two, three tours a day, waking up in the morning, going and meeting my guests, walking with them, taking them to the bazaar, taking them to Kaput, taking them around the Golden Quarter. Um, but then on top of my walking tour business, I've always had other projects that I do. Um, I write articles, have a project about mosaics, uh, I'm writing a book about that. So I always have these other projects and thank God because the last year would have been super boring without any tourists and I've had these other things to do. Can you share about the, the other projects that you were working on? So one I know that you've seen is the video we did after Borat. Yeah, so yeah. When Borat came out last year, I was gonna ask. Um, we came up with this concept to change Kazakhstan's official slogan to very nice, yeah. which is like kind of his catchphrase, right? You might have seen that video. So that was crazy because the, the National Tourism Board, Kazakh Tourism said, okay, let's do it. <laughs> and we shot this video in like three days and put it on YouTube and it, it went viral and we got it in the New York Times and got a lot of attention for it. Mm -hmm. um, That's amazing. So what we hope though is that from that video, people saw it, like they see your videos, right? Saw what the real Kazakhstan is like, mm -hmm. not not Borat's mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, but the real Kazakhstan. And say, wow, I, I never did that. Mm -hmm. Now I want to visit. Mm -hmm. And hopefully when the borders open up, they can finally do that. Mm -hmm. What about the mosaics? What's something special about it? Yeah, so that's a project I started, I guess, three years ago. Um, documenting these Soviet mosaics, first in Almaty and then in Kazakhstan. So I think it's something a lot of people notice, foreigners notice when they first come mm -hmm. here, is like on a lot of public buildings, there are just these big murals made out of these little tiles. And they just look really cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was hard for me to find information about it, about like who were the artists? Uh, when was this made? How was it made? So I just started to do research and meet the mosaic makers, mm -hmm. um, track down different mosaics and make a map of them. And so I made a website called Monumental Almaty, mm -hmm. where it's like a, like a digital catalog of every mosaic in, in the city. Mm -hmm. So you can go on there and you can find information about these and, and learn more about it. Was there any dangerous or unsafe place you know, hooked in? Or no, it's funny because you? there's definitely like neighborhoods that people have warned me about. Yeah. Like, don't go to Pirvai Almata. Yeah. Don't go to Aksai. Don't yeah. go to uh, Ainu Bulak. Yeah. But I've been everywhere, and everywhere people are nice. Yeah. But I will say, I don't walk at night. Yeah. You know, I'm sure there are places that are sketchy at night. Yeah. I think in the center of town, yeah. walk around the center of Almata.
So I think of this neighborhood of Kampot as, as kind of like an island. Um, because it's surrounded on two sides by these two little creeks. Mm -hmm. um, we're next to one of them, that's so called Kazachka. Mm -hmm. And then on the other one is the Malay Almatinka, the small Almaty River. Mm -hmm. So when Almaty was kind of just started to grow in the 19th century, this was this place that was like right there, but there's only one bridge to come there. So there's like one way in, one way out. And so people would come over here and make their dachas, their little kind of mm -hmm. gardens and cottages, but it was a different world. And when you walk here now, you can still kind of feel that, right? That's what mm -hmm. I'm talking about. Um, but not many people know about the Kazachka, it's this small kind mm -hmm. of creek. And they put in benches here and they made this nice little spot. So it's a beautiful place to sit, read a book, but you'll never ever see anybody else here. Yeah. I don't really know who they made it for, to be honest, because <laughs> <laughs> nobody knows this place exists. Exactly. But I like these kind of uh, hidden spots. Mm. And it's a neighborhood that's famous for its fruit trees. Mm. So some of your viewers might not know that compote, right, is this like fruit, yeah. fruit drink, drink. <laughs> made, made from dried fruits. Fruit. <laughs> boil up like dried fruit, yeah. right? And they call it compote because all the streets used to be called Apple Street, Pear Street, mm. Cherry Street, mm. and there are fruit trees everywhere. Um, so it's another fun thing to walk here a little bit later in the spring and there's cherries you can pick right off the trees, there's, um, there's plums all over the place. Mm. So it's just kind of like this Local. big garden right next to the center of town. Mm. So Kampo is kind of a sad story because like uh, I think probably your viewers are going to see it. it's got a really kind of cool um, atmosphere here but it's changing super fast. And you were saying that a lot of buildings are being torn. Um, yeah. And like new residential buildings are... Yeah, because like traditionally it was just like these small little Russian cottages. Right? But it's not that comfortable for people to live in anymore. Yeah. People have been living here for more than a century. What about safety? You were just saying that you feel safe in the city or... Yeah, I mean look, there's a lot of places in the world where if you came over to like some place in the middle of nowhere like we are right now, mm -hmm. you would feel a little bit uncomfortable, yeah. a little bit sketchy. Yeah. And I can, look, as a man, I have a certain amount of pillars that I can come here and feel safe. I, there may be women who would, wouldn't feel safe coming here. But I will say, I feel safe everywhere in all of you. I never, I've never been robbed, I've never been scammed, nothing bad has ever happened to me. And Even I've been everywhere. In the center, especially at 4 a.m., you really just like, you can walk around. No, I can walk in the middle of the night and it's yeah. like super quiet and yeah. um, you might, meet some goofy drunk people but, <laughs> but, but that's kind of it you know yeah um, and, and i come from la and there are parts of la where you do not mm, want to walk you don't want to yeah no. well look i mean people are coming through with like certain assumptions mm -hmm. i mean for the very most ignorant they just see the yeah, name kazakhstan the countries and they think about afghanistan yeah. and they literally are look literally people are like is there a war there like <laughs> <laughs> and to us that seems ridiculous but if you don't know geography it's like yeah. it just sounds like this scary like place in the middle east yeah. but it's like couldn't be farther from that at all right yeah. um it's one of the most peaceful places in the world i think where like there's not a lot of violence people live in harmony I sound like a like Kazakhstan <laughs> propaganda now. <laughs> TV channel. <laughs> I did used to work for a Kazakh TV <laughs> yeah. channel, so maybe that's why. TV yeah. channel vibes. <laughs> yeah. But like you would still avoid some of the areas at night, right? Maybe some. But that's any big city in the world, okay. right? Yeah. And uh, especially if you're a visitor or a tourist, you're not going to be go crawling around some weird neighborhoods. Yeah. Yeah. Probably going to be somewhere in the center. Yeah. So when it comes to your walking tour business, do you plan on expanding, adding some guides, or is it just you? I'm kind of, mm, I'm kind of a perfectionist. Yeah. And so I have a lot of faith in my own ability to yeah. to kind of tell the stories that I want to mm -hmm. tell. But it's hard to find people with the right stuff to be a yeah. guide. Yeah. You've got to be a good storyteller. Yeah. You've got to be really and passionate about so what you're knowledge. talking about. So like you can find people who speak good English mm. and you can find people who are really really passionate about Almaty or about the city about architecture and so on but it's really hard to find people who have both mm -hmm. so for now it's just me um, and I'm okay with that mm -hmm. uh, 
but I'm always thinking of new tours and new things, so eventually I'm going to have to work with somebody else. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm thinking. Stressed, so. Yeah. <laughs> what if like there's such a... Right, you want to be a tour guide? No. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just asking. You'd be good at it. No, but like a lot of people ask me for, for being a guide and I, I'm not, I, I don't know that many things and I don't know. But that, here's the thing, is like people people misunderstand what it really means to be a guide some people think it means you have to know all these facts and figures mm -hmm. right and you have to like memorize mm -hmm. the date that this statue was mm -hmm. built or something mm -hmm. i don't think that's what people really care about people care about stories mm -hmm. and if you've you know lived here and you know the city you have your own personal homity that you can share with people but i haven't really lived here like i was i lived you in knew Astana. about this place this coffee shop and i didn't <laughs> i know looked it up it. on instagram <laughs> Well, that's still <laughs> the best search engine. Yeah, <laughs> is Instagram. So you know these places, right? And imagine, imagine your tourist who is coming here, and you know nothing. Yeah, you yeah. have a lot yeah. to share. Anybody who's here has a lot to share. Yeah. Well, I just take them to my favorite places. That's it. <laughs> so, you didn't finish about your routine. Ah, so so nowadays, yeah, it's a lot different because I have a uh, baby boy who's uh, a year and five months. So the routine is that he sits on my face at <laughs> seven in the morning and says "Papa," <laughs> and then I go back to sleep and he crawls around me. Uh, wake up, have some breakfast, mm -hmm. and then my day is different every day because I do not have an office job. I've never wanted that kind of lifestyle, mm -hmm. so I'll have Same. different meetings, right? And so. It just depends on where my meetings are, who I'm talking to, what kind of projects I'm mm -hmm. working on that day. And every month I'm working on different projects, so mm -hmm. it's kind of hard to say. But lately I've been trying to swim, so mm -hmm. I go to Rahat Fitness and do laps. Mm -hmm. I try to try to walk as much as I can. I try to check out new restaurants. Can you talk about your family? or? No, I don't talk about them. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so I've got two families now, because I have my <laughs> wife and my baby. So that's unit number one. Yeah. Um, so my wife Adisa, uh, I met here, she's Kazakh, and uh, we got married five years ago. And How did you meet? We were teaching English together. Uh. So that was my first gig when I was here, I was teaching mm. English, she's an English teacher, mm -hmm. and we were teaching a class together. And we weren't supposed to, <laughs> we weren't supposed to be dating, but yeah. What about, like, how do you, what language do you speak to your kid now? Oh, poor kid. We speak to him in three <laughs> languages. So, we, we, I mean, we, we plan that, is that yeah. we want him to be exposed to all three languages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it's just which one you start with. So, his mom speaks to him in Kazakh. Mm. So, his Kazakh is actually the strongest. Oh. And uh, then we have a nanny who speaks to him in Russian. Mm -hmm. And I try to speak to him in English, but he doesn't understand English as well as he speaks, as he understands Kazakh. Mm -hmm. So, if I say, like, you know, Jean, I'm going to get that. He just looks at me and he's like, what are you saying, American? And I say, Jean, then he can understand. So I, I speak a good amount of Kazakh with him too. Oh, wow. Oh my God, we discovered a private house that looks like a state building. Right? That's good luck. <laughs> that? Yeah. Crazy. What? I'm in Beverly Hills right now. Where are we? So, I think we'll have to walk down some of the like the normal streets of uh, Kampot to give you an idea of just how weird it is that this is here, because the rest of the neighborhood is like these cute little Russian cottages mm -hmm. with like carved wooden windows mm -hmm. and that were built a hundred years ago. Right now it's uh, on the Jolova. Uh, Wait. Здравствуйте. Здравствуйте. Мы просто смотрим на ваш красивый дом. Спасибо. Видео снимаем о компоте. О компоте? 55 -го года и 56 -го год мы уже поселились. Ваш отец сам, что ли? Ну да, это yeah. строили yeah. мои родители yeah. в компании mm. со своими родственниками. I haven't seen this place. Yeah, it's a nice oh, one. The beans okay. that I got the other day here. Cool. Yeah, uh, like Kampot. right in Kampot, yeah. Kampot doesn't have this kind of uh, contemporary culture, like mm. this kind of hip culture. So, super cool. Russian soldiers and the streets are named after these Russian soldiers. But yeah. what does that have to do with Kazakhstan? Yeah. I'm happy that the streets exactly. are named after Kazakhs and people can learn about Kazakh heroes. World War II is like 
you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I have mixed feelings about it. <laughs> People in Kazakhstan have a right to be proud about it. Yeah. So many of your grandparents and great grandparents gave their lives mm -hmm. and defeated the Nazis. You know, in, in America, we like to take credit for that. And we like to say that the, the yeah. Americans kind of, yeah. When we talk about space, they just talk about the Neil Armstrong thing. And they just talk about Gagarin. And we don't even know who Yuri Gagarin is. I'm like, what about the first person in space? Yeah. Excuse me? Yeah. yeah. So that's the good thing about coming is you get a different perspective on things. Yeah. So what do you don't like about Kazakhstan? and cause a culture maybe, or mentality? Yeah, so I'm usually pretty careful about answering those kind of questions because I don't want it to seem like I'm kind of coming from the outside and, and criticizing um, this country. But the longer I've lived here, I've been here for, for a long time now, I feel like a local and I feel like it's given me a certain, a certain authority to mm -hmm. have an opinion yeah, about Yeah, definitely. Because I mean, there's just things in daily life that, that are tough. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, the f one thing is just the way t people treat each other here, and I mean, like, strangers. So, people on the bus or, like, the kind of service you get in restaurants sometimes where people can just be really nasty to each other. And it's kind of a paradox here because uh, if they were friends or family, they would be super nice to each other. But because they're strangers, there's, like, this level of kind of, like, mistrust always in Kazakh culture where people are very cold mm -hmm. um, but I've kind of learned to see that as a challenge where like if somebody's being cold or rude to me I kind of just put my American charm <laughs> on and try to try to get them to smile and try to get them to like figure out what's going on because usually it just where does that come from is it just people are having a bad day mm -hmm. and people are honest about that and they show it so it's just different than Americans who put on a fake smile and, mm -hmm. and don't talk about it mm -hmm. people are you know, if they're frustrated, then they're going to show they're frustrated. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the biggest thing I struggle with every day is just, you know, I'm used to coming from America to like being friendly, smiling, mm -hmm. right, being warm to people, and then you just get. And my wife and I notice this more now that we have a kid, because when we're in other places in the road, when we walk around people play with him mm -hmm. and they make faces at him and they smile they love kids, and yeah. here's this weird thing where like he's this adorable kid and I was on the playground the other day and there's just this woman sitting there like this <laughs> and like he's looking at her and like trying to <laughs> like flirt with her and she's just like why you gotta be like that what are some things you like about Almaty I like every, everything else <laughs> <laughs> what's I the mean, biggest uh almost in particular it's just like really one of the most beautiful cities in the world mm. to be here next to like the mountains to have such a green city with trees and parks everywhere to be able to walk everywhere have like so many cool cafes and coffee shops it's just like a super livable city mm -hmm. i think that's what um people back home in the states don't always understand about why i, I like living here is that if you had a city like almaty in the states everybody would want to live there mm. because just the quality of life is mm. really high Whereas where I grew up in Los Angeles, you have to drive everywhere, yeah. right? Everything is super far apart. Um, there's no trees. Whereas this is just a really nice place to live. Mm -hmm. What are some things that your tourists like about your tours or Almaty in general? Um, they, I think a lot of people who come here are, are interested in the Soviet side of things, mm. to be honest. So like uh, that Soviet history, Soviet architecture, mm. Soviet mosaics, and Soviet art, simply because um, the Soviet Union was so closed for so long, right? And it became this kind of uh, almost mythical place that to come here and to see the Lenin statues and to see all that, mm -hmm. it makes it feel more real. Mm -hmm. And it's also just quite an, an aesthetic that it was mm -hmm. this whole kind of empire mm -hmm. that just disappeared. So I think there's a lot of interest in that. Um, and that's something I, I do try to highlight in my tours because I'm not afraid to show that. Mm. Whereas a lot of local tourist people, they're maybe ashamed of the Soviet past or it's like politically complicated to talk about the Soviet past. Whereas I say, no, this happened, it's history, it's interesting, and so kind of. I feel like as a local, I would just think about it as old. Like to me, it's old and I just want something new, you know? Right, right, <laughs> I just right. want to get rid of it. But then I think about the fact that it's so different from the Western world and it's like actually a treasure of ours. 
and we need to preserve no, it. Look, I appreciate that too yeah. because I live in an old Soviet building, and uh, to a tourist, they might look at it and be like, "Oh, cool, like a concrete uh, housing block. It's so Soviet." But I have to live where the the water goes out all the time, and our stairwell <gasps> is like super gross, and the facade is falling apart, and so yeah, it's old. It's not really cool when you live there. <laughs> Why did you choose But, that place? Um, the location is amazing. Location? So I'm right in the middle mm, of town, mm. um, right next to the Starbucks. Mm. <laughs> Can you share about the typical apartments or living spaces, like Soviet spaces in Almaty? Maybe like mm -hmm. some things that struck you? Because I saw the like one video about DVT Tashki. Yeah. And they were showing that there's no like what is it for carts? You can't like take them through the stairs, and you just have to like for Kardashian. Yeah. Yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, that's a problem. It doesn't yeah. exist there, right? Because like we live in, for example, in a five-story building mm -hmm. where there's no elevator, mm -hmm. so you, we have to walk up the stairs. Okay, fine. But when you've got a baby a kid, and, a, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a stroller, uh, it's a pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, is there uh, anything something like that that is unique to Soviet buildings, or you know? Well, the, the, yeah, there's a lot of things that are unique. The kitchens are quite small. Yeah. I mean, and as Americans, we really like these huge kitchens. You've seen them in TV shows, right? With like a big island in the middle and lots of space to move around. And here, we can barely fit two people in the kitchen. The balconies are kind of funny, right? Where you have mm. these balconies. And in most cases, they've kind of been kind of closed off with glass. Um, that's a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But no, it's mostly just getting used to living in a smaller space. Local apartments are quite small, relatively speaking. Mm -hmm. Maybe not for Europeans, but for for Americans. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they say that this tree is 300 years old, which is older than the modern city of Almaty, basically. Oh wow! Uh, and it's an oak tree that's still in pretty good condition. And mm -hmm. we saw that other tree up there that was 150 years old. So Kampot just has the most amazing trees. Mm -hmm. So I came here one time with this guy from the Netherlands who was writing a book about trees. And mm -hmm. he said, show me show me some Almaty trees. And we walked here. And that's when we talked to that babushka. So that's why she remembers me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I liked what she was saying. Yeah. She was saying that the trees can tell you about the weather. Mm -hmm. Then it means that it's time to plant the tomatoes. Yes, yes. <laughs> of like super old classic compote home. So I'll show you a little trick about how to recognize like the oldest houses in Almaty. Yeah. So come over here. So you see this kind of thing poking out right here? Uh -huh. And you see how on the edge of the wall there's uh, another thing poking out? Uh -huh. So what we're looking at here actually is that this is a log cabin, like a log home. Uh -huh. Right, and so the logs are kind of overlapping like that, mm -hmm. and then, but then they just put some clothes on the logs so that you can't tell that it's a log home. Mm -hmm. They put adobe and then plaster and paint on top. So mm -hmm. what we're looking at there is actually just a log. Yeah. So yeah, you know, it's one thing to admire them, but when we were talking to that other babushka, she was saying, it's it's one thing to admire from she said from the side, right? But side. but to live in it, it's a it's a different story. <laughs> So you plan to stay here, or what do you what are your uh, plans? That's something my my wife asks me every day. <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna do? Because I was gonna ask, why did you stay? <laughs> well, so far I've stayed because I I really just love the, the life I have here. Yeah. I love what I do. Mm -hmm. I love the friends I've been able to make. And my wife's family is here, and that's important to us. Do you have local friends, or do you have foreign friends, like expats? Mix of both. Mix mm -hmm. of both. Um, but but in terms of like what happens next, it's it's hard because um, when my kid gets older, we have to send him to school, mm. and then you have to start thinking about that. Yeah, right? which one do you choose? <laughs> and the uh, the best schools here are private schools, yeah. which are not that affordable. Yeah. And the public schools have, have issues. So. Is there anything that you would change in Kazakhstan or in Almaty? <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. So many things. I mean, I I. I As part of my kind of initiatives with Walking Almaty and Monumental Almaty, mm. I, I try to, to try to change things. What I what I try to do is to get people to think differently about their environment and their history, and to kind of take a more active position on things, right? Because there's a lot of cynicism here. Mm. There's a lot of kind of 
nihilism where people are just like, okay, it doesn't matter. There's mm-hmm. nothing I can do, mm-hmm. right? Uh, the the Akima, which is like the city government, they they should take care of it, mm-hmm. right? But uh, people, local people, have to care about things. First. They have to start the conversation, right? They have to start the conversation, and they have to show that they care. Mm-hmm. So that's what I always push is for people to really invest in their own communities, to invest in their own spaces, mm-hmm. and that can start at like the level of like the building where you live. So like, you know, I live in one of these Soviet apartments and we have this common courtyard that we call mm-hmm. the door, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And when I moved there, I was like, why is the door like full of trash? And why mm-hmm. is this place falling apart? Because people just didn't care. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I went and I did a Subotnik, like a volunteer mm-hmm. day, and started to clean things up, people were like, oh yeah, maybe we should help too. Mm-hmm. So hopefully we can inspire people just to like- Lead by example. Just to, yeah, and to invest more in the places they live. So what kind of activities you can do in Almaty, like a tourist can do? Uh, well, first of all, I'm not just saying this because I do walking tours, but it's just a great place to walk mm-hmm. and, and get lost, mm-hmm. right? So I'm going to take you to a neighborhood today, Kampoi, where it's so green and lush and all these little kind of back alleyways that you could just walk around the whole day. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the first thing I always recommend. It's like you don't have to do something, mm-hmm. just explore. Mm-hmm. But for people who like to do, there's the mountains here, so you can go hiking, uh, you can go skiing in the winter time. Um, there's lots of yeah, outdoor activities to do, lots of quite nice museums to visit, bazaars to explore. Mm. Do you have to be like physically prepared for that kind of tour, or how does that work? <laughs> I know you're asking that because we did because we went hiking one yeah. time and we both almost died. Yeah. Um, and that's the easiest path. <laughs> yeah, no, so I'll take you on a hike today that's more for beginners. But most Thank hikes God. here <laughs> most hikes here are not for beginners. Because the mountains here are big and yeah. steep and uh, the hikes tend to be pretty tough. So if you're young and in good shape, mm-hmm. it's great, but it's not for people of all ages, it's not for people of all fitness levels for sure. And you said you design tours specifically for people yeah, so I, I don't do hiking tours. I do walking tours in the yeah, city yeah. because I want to make it accessible for everybody. So I make all my tours downhill. <laughs> I yeah, make them all, perfect. you know, one or two kilometers, not too long. Yeah. Uh, plenty of shade, places to stop. Because yeah. I have, you know, I've had guests who are 90 years old. And I want them to be able to enjoy all the tea. Oh, the same wow. Ways, you know? That's nice. What about food? Can you share about food in Kazakhstan? I could talk about food all day. <laughs> I'm a big foodie. Okay. The amazing thing about food here is just, and I think I appreciate this as an American, where we're so used to having different kinds of food, right? Where Americans can have Chinese food yeah. on Monday, Mexican food on Tuesday. Here's the same thing. Mm-hmm. So there's Georgian food, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. Turkish food, Korean food, Russian food, Kazakh food. I can keep listening. Yeah, there's so many yeah, different yeah. cuisines to try. Um, and they're all really good. Mm-hmm. So... And especially even in the time that I've lived here, the kind of cafe, restaurant culture in Almaty is really developed. So mm-hmm. there's a lot of really good chefs who are doing interesting things. So yeah, there's a lot of good food in Almaty. Do you know how to make a local friend? Can you give suggestions to people? Because <laughs> <laughs> everybody wants to go into a local's house and like try homemade food, you know? I don't think you need like a special strategy because <laughs> in Kazakhstan people are so nice. Yeah. That, dude, I mean, all you have to do is come here and people will talk to you and invite you into their home. Mm-hmm. I guarantee it. Mm-hmm. Um, and especially because there are so few tourists here, right? There are relatively few there foreigners very here. Very few, yeah. That people are excited to talk mm-hmm. to people f- from the outside. Yeah. Um, so no, I don't think you need any special techniques. So you did say about Kazakh hosp- hospitality that is it different from like other cultures or? Mm, sure, sure. I mean, I've thought about this because Americans are hospitable, yeah. but we're hospitable in our own way. Mm-hmm. So our style is, Salted, you come over to my house, make yourself at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, open up the refrigerator and take whatever you want. <laughs> you know, Here's the TV remote, watch whatever you want. Right? Yeah. It's more like you do your yeah. own thing. Yeah. Whereas here... Respecting your privacy. Respecting your uh-huh. boundaries, <laughs> your desires, whatever. Yeah. Here, it's a different style <laughs> where it's more like, come here, sit down, Drink, eat. drink with me. <laughs> Did you um, have to... Where the, I, look, God bless Kazakhs, the hospitality can be almost overwhelming sometimes, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. 
right? <laughs> because it could be like, eat, eat, eat. No, I'm not yeah, hungry. Like, you're not eat, eating. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't um, but finish. that's just how people show they care, right? That's how people, sh- and that's how people show they respect you. And they that's care how we're you. raised. Like our aunts and like grandmothers, they're like, you're not eating. You're so thin. <laughs> you need to get some weight. What about in general? Is it considered like salty for you? Oily maybe in general or? Salty, yes. Oily, yes. But I like salty or oily yeah. food, so I'm not, I'm not complaining. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What about like fruits and vegetables and like salads? Not the best place in the world for, mm. for fruits. Vegetables, a lot of root vegetables, yeah, right? Yeah. So like if you like beets and potatoes, yeah. then this is the place for you. No, yeah. I wouldn't say that's kind of much right. But meat, very good quality meat. Oh yeah. Uh, oh my God. Very good quality dairy products. Dairy products. Okay. Do you want to talk about racism? <laughs> about racism? Wow, you've got like some hot topics on here. I know. <laughs> it, does it exist in Kazakhstan? <laughs> Let's start from there. Does racism exist in Kazakhstan? No, I think if I think thinking about it that way is very much like an American yeah. way of thinking about things, right? Because race is our big, uh, our big shame. pain point. Uh, it's our big national mm-hmm. shame and our big problem to solve. Mm-hmm. And I don't think race is as kind of the central division in mm-hmm. Kazakh society. It's within the Kazakh mm-hmm. people that mm-hmm. the divisions exist, right? Mm-hmm. Between like city and rural. Yeah. Between and, like, the Russian three... speakers and Kazakh speakers. Mm-hmm. Those are, to me, those, those are like the, the major mm-hmm. divisions. And so I think it mostly comes down to language. Um, where Russian speakers have certain privileges in this country that Kazakh speakers don't have. Some situations, Kazakh speakers have privileges that Russian speakers don't have. And that's, that's the toughest part. And so it's not racism, but there's definitely uh, prejudice. Division. Division. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think, what would you suggest to learn for people like Russian or Kazakh or both? Like where should, it, should they start if they wanted to come here, live here maybe? Yeah. I mean, look, if you're coming to Almaty, realistically, Russian is the most useful language. Mm-hmm. Because it's a very Russian-speaking city and Russian is kind of the common language for it. But on the other hand, um, people really appreciate it when you speak Kazakh. Mm-hmm. So I go about my day and I speak Russian day to day. Mm-hmm. And people don't bat an eye. Mm-hmm. But if I say one sentence in Kazakh, everybody <laughs> smiles and laughs. <laughs> yeah. And That's such a big compliment. <laughs> they, they just appreciate them, it. Yeah, you know? yeah. And it doesn't take a lot. It, it takes, you know, knowing 10 words or 100 words or something. But it makes a difference. Can you say something in Kazakh? <laughs> okay. Do you remember any cultural shocks, maybe first impressions? Or no? You know, it's funny. My wife discovered my old diary the other week. Mm. The diary that I kept when I came here as a teenager. Oh. And you know teenagers. They're yeah. moody. <laughs> They're grumpy. And it was reading back through it, it was just me complaining. About, <laughs> it's so hot here and the streets are so dirty. <laughs> And these people keep trying to make me eat food that I don't want to eat. Oh <laughs> uh, no! So there was a big culture shock. I mean, yeah. I was a seventeen-year-old uh, kid. Yeah, I never, I never really spent time outside of America. And imagine like the first place you go to is Kazakhstan, mm-hmm. which is pretty. I mean, the reality here is pretty far away from mm-hmm. what I what I grew up with. So yeah, it was hard. It was it took some adjustment at first. Can we maybe shortly talk about how cheap is Kazakhstan or like the currency devaluation thing? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, when I first moved here, the exchange rate was 150 tenge to a dollar. Mm-hmm. And what's it today? Like 400 and... 28, 30. 28, 430. Okay. So if you're coming in with dollars, that means pretty much everything is half as cheap as it was mm-hmm. when, I, when I first came here. So at first, it wasn't that affordable here. But now for tourists who are coming with dollars or euros, it's 
fantastically cheap. It's amazing. Fantastically yeah. cheap. Mm -hmm. But we always have to um, add some context to that, that for local people, the salaries remain quite low. They're mm -hmm. obviously making their salaries in, in Tengye, mm -hmm. and it's hard to buy goods from abroad yeah, because then you the have to go thing. the other way. Mm -hmm. You have to, and, and so, so that's it's getting more expensive for us, yeah. for the people who make money in Tengye, I guess. Maybe you can name a few favorite places in Omari? So I'll take you to one of my favorite places today, mm. uh, it's Kampot. Uh, there's a Uyghur neighborhood called Sultan Korgan that I really like, mm. where you can find the best lagman, Uyghur food, super friendly people. And then I just like my neighborhood where I live. We call it the Golden Quarter, so it's kind of the center of the city. Beautiful old apartment buildings, parks, squares, cafes on the street. Mm. Is there one favorite place maybe? Like the restaurant maybe? Hmm favorite restaurant Coco Chicken oh yeah I like everything that AB restaurant says here mm -hmm. in Almaty so they're kind yeah, of like the top of the too. game mm -hmm. and they I mean it's, it's like a Kazakh food it's fried chicken sandwiches but they, they do it pretty good what's your favorite Kazakh uh, dish hmm is there one I like Kazi mm -hmm. so horse sausage yeah um yeah, I mean, a lot of Kazakh food just isn't to my taste. Yeah. It doesn't mean it's good or it's bad. It just means I grew up with a certain palate, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, a lot of the dairy products is too sour, too salty for me. What are some things about Kazakh culture that are unique and something that you would share with your American friends? Maybe, like, being late, having weddings for <laughs> 1,000 people. <laughs> I've definitely started being more late than I was when I was <laughs> here. Um, I was oh, gonna so ask. Those kind of like like uh, under the current cultural things, right? I think family is a is a really big thing because mm. like in American families, it's very much individualistic. Where like kids kind of go off and do their own things, and mm. you maybe see it, see each other for holidays, mm. but it's not as kind of tight knit. Day to day. Yeah. Whereas like it's been really cool getting to become a part of my wife's family, mm. where like we see her parents all the time. And, meet their aunts and uncles and we just from Oralsk, which is the other side of the country and we go and visit Oralsk every year and we have those connections mm -hmm. and that means a lot to people here and we have the whatsapp group where we send each yeah, other yeah, yeah. memes <laughs> and stuff every morning <laughs> uh, where it's like my whatsapp group with my family in America is like crickets you know there's, yeah. there's nothing going on there but the Kazakh family is always <laughs> good morning what about Kazakh holidays do you like any of those Nowadays, maybe? Yeah, I mean, Nowadays is nice because um, it's one of the few times when people really go out on the street and set up yurts and like you can see that traditional mm -hmm. traditional kind of mm -hmm. Kazakh culture. Mm -hmm. Of course, like day-to-day -day life, when do we ever see a yurt in, in all the mm -hmm. right? so, so that's what I like about it, is being able to see that. Mm -hmm. um, I like that New Year's here, people take very seriously. Um, we spent New Year's in, in the States last year and my wife was very disappointed because she's like, you guys don't do anything. <laughs> just like, yeah, it's watch nothing. this stupid TV it's show and Christmas, then go to bed. Yeah. yeah. Of course here it's like a huge holiday, so I like that. The last question would be, is there anything you would suggest or warn about or tell to anyone who's coming to Kazakhstan? Any advice? Not warn about because that makes it sound scary. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But suggest is I just, I just recommend people come here. Um, and see the place for themselves mm -hmm. because I've met hundreds and hundreds of tourists now over the years and I swear to God every single one of them fell in love with this place it's like 100% satisfaction mm -hmm. there's not that many places in the world where you can see that that mm -hmm. like, everybody likes it but I mean Almaty is just such a special place mm -hmm. that um, it's guaranteed to please and it's not necessarily the whole country it's specifically Almaty that you're talking about well, because Almaty is kind of my first love, but yeah. uh, no, look, the rest of the country is amazing too. There's a mm. lot to see in the rest of the country. Uh, but Almaty, it's, it's got something special. And there's no, like, do you have any advice not to get into scams or? That's the thing is like, there's not there that aren't many really scams. Yeah. Here. Um, for a tourist, like, they can come here and they can feel very safe. Mm -hmm. And they can, I think what people like is that they can experience something that really feels authentic. Mm. Right, you go to so many tourist destinations in the world and it all feels like somebody's just trying to take your money. Mm -hmm. right? And it's all like shows and experiences. 
so this was it if you like this video here's another interview that you might like and yeah i just wanted to thank dennis for participating in this video for sharing all his stories if you want to find more information about him about his project i have all the links down below and yeah thank you for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you in my other one